Okay, we're back with uh, topic 3.3 in your ESS syllabus, and we're looking at the threats to biodiversity. Um, we'll jump right in, and we'll start with, first of all, if there's a threat to the numbers, what are the numbers? The numbers currently, there's a, a massive discrepancy in this, and people suggest that, scientists suggest that there's between five and 50 million species out there. Obviously a huge range in that number. Um, because we can't physically count every single thing out there. So the method of collecting this number is, well, estimation is one and prediction is the other. Um, estimations, one example of how we use an estimation in science to be as accurate as possible is counting tree beetles, for example, um, in a particular forest you're never going to be able to go out into each tree and count every single beetle. But what you can do is probably net one tree and count as precisely as possible the number of beetles in that tree. Um, if you have time, you can do several trees. And then find out the total number of trees and do a quick calculation to find out, okay, if there's 100 trees and there's one beetle per tree that you find and you find 100 trees, there's probably 100 beetles in that forest. Um, another thing you could also add on is find out what's the percentage of beetles versus other invertebrates in that tree. Uh, oftentimes, in one study I saw, it was 40% were beetles. The rest of were a cluster of different types of invertebrates. So 40% beetles, that means 60% other invertebrates. You can start to figure out the numbers of other invertebrates as well in the forest using some simple math. Um, Again, though, that's estimation. That's, that's not that accurate, um, but it gives you some starting point. Another way to look at the number of species, and this is in a, a science journal, I believe I'll, I'll share this, or the uh, Nature, the Journal of Nature, and, and I'll share this link in the description below. Um, and there's an article that they came up with, 8.7 million species out there, simply going backwards, looking at the number of different phyla on the Earth, how many classes within that phyla, how many orders, how many family, genus, and we have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Um, so they got to the genus uh, range and they said if we follow this trend, this curved line, we should end up with species at about here with close pushing 10 million, 8.7 million was their estimation without counting anything. So um, starting backwards. One, and that's just another method. So estimation, prediction are, are ways that we try to estimate how many, and figure out how many species are on this planet. Currently there's a, an interesting website. I'd take a picture of this with your phone and it'll take you to this website. Um, and it'd be great if you try to pick three organisms and just try to find their species name first. See how, how you can navigate um, this website. So any three organisms that you know of, their common name, try to dig in, see if you can use this website to find their species name. Another interesting feature of this website is looking at a taxonomic tree. It's what it sounds like. It's a tree of life. Um, and go backwards and try to find, uh, I picked a lion. You can pick another animal you would like. Uh, a lion and, and most large, ma large mammals will have a spinal cord. So they are, you can look for the word chordata and that's the phyla that they are in. They are the chordatas, spinal cord like us. Um, snake has a, a spinal cord, uh, fish has a spinal cord as well actually. Um, so you can have a bit of an exploration around here. It's pretty interesting to see all life that we know documented in one place. Um, so looking at the different types of impact on species and, and biodiversity, uh, humans clearly are, that's sort of the nature of our course, we constantly look back at ourselves and seeing what kind of things we are doing to impact uh, other species. The data is there, there's a strong correlation between the rise of humans um, as the population increases and the rate of extinction of species around us. Uh, we're dominating and we're taking advantage for sure and the data is there to show that. So there's going to be five different areas uh, on, on uh, threats to biodiversity that we're going to dig in here. 
and the first is looking at uh, over-exploitation. So the humans as being the source of, of wiping out other species, uh, number one, over-exploitation, we are killing things off or eating them like no time for in human history. I'm going to buzz through these and, and we can come back to them a little bit, but I'll get through these headings mostly. Um, habitat degradation is another big issue because we are using a lot of these wild spaces to build, to mine, to log. Um, those are all natural habitats for other species, whether we know it or not. We are removing space for other things that exist in these places. Invasive and alien species, uh, we move things around the planet like never before with ships and airplanes. Um, there's some examples in this picture that you can see here, and I'll just go through a couple of them. Um, there's the Indian crow in Tanzania. I lived there for many, many years, and uh, crows were brought in initially because they initially they were in India and in the part of India where they were, they were seen as a, a, a resourceful animal that would eat the garbage in these in these areas. So they were brought into Dar es Salaam. First thing they did is they said, actually, we don't like the garbage. We prefer eating small birds and bird eggs and we don't want competition either. So they wiped out uh, a lot of the, the native species in Dar es Salaam and you saw the, the diversity in uh, smaller birds in Dar es Salaam, in and around Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, plummet and the population of crows skyrocket. So that was an invasive species. Um, you may have heard about cane toads in Australia, uh, Nile perch in Lake Victoria. Nile perch were brought in thinking that they were gonna be a, a better food source uh, for local people and also uh, a farmed potential uh, money maker so you could actually get a lot more meat off of this fish and sell it and make more money. Um, turns out these fish came in, they were brought in as a, an alien species and they didn't have any natural competitors. So they grow to huge sizes and they completely took over and they ate all the local fish and they started eating even themselves and they grew to these giant sizes to where local fishermen with a small reel and a canoe couldn't catch this right here. Um, and it became quite a problem for the diversity in Lake Victoria where you had a huge range of different cichlids and other types of fish as well getting wiped out by the Nile perch. Um, lots of examples out there I list for there's endless examples. You, sh you really should be armed with a couple examples. I would go to your home country and find out about an invasive species from your home country that you can connect with, that you can think about with your own eyes, knowing what it looks like where you come from, and have that as a, uh, in, your, in your toolkit when you are asked to discuss these things. Um, let's see. When we talk about invasive species, there's a lot being done in places to try to remove invasive species. It's a touchy subject because um, once you have something there, how long before it becomes a part of that environment? Um, but if you try to get rid of it early enough and soon enough, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, biological controls are one, and that's uh, there's a, a slight danger in that. I mean, using one organism to wipe out another organism, the invasive organism, is one method. You do the danger and that is you have the potential of introducing yet another problem onto the initial problem. Um, eradication programs exist as well and there's some ethical issues to that. Uh, the idea of culling, I've seen that done in, in uh, Zambia where there were too many hippos in a river and they were uh, damaging the river, not enabling other things like crocodiles and fish to live in that river. Um, and the population of hippos was rampant. It was way too much for that, that national park to handle. Um, and so they literally went in and started killing hippos, culling, controlled killing uh, of an animal to bring the species number down for the better of the whole habitat. Um, it's a whole nother debate you could get into because there's a lot of ethical problems with that, but there's also, also um, the larger picture issue that you have to consider as well. So 
I'll leave that for another uh, class. Hopefully we have everyone together and we could even run that as a debate. That would be a good one. Pollution is obviously a huge issue that we're experiencing on this planet. The more uh, resources we consume, the more pollution we have, especially ocean plastics is a big one that we will have, uh, and we'll talk about that in a, in a class down the road. Um, so aquatic pollution, like I just mentioned, things going into the oceans, uh, terrestrial, which means on land, and atmospheric, which are particulate in the atmosphere, air pollution. And we'll explore each one of these actually in separate units. So I'll just skim over this right now as an, as an outline. Um, the last big issue that's impacting biodiversity like never before is this, uh, the topic of climate change. We spend our, a whole, well, one seventh of our course is on climate change, um, and it weaves throughout everything that we do in this class. Uh, this is relatively old data, 2007, but it says in 2007, uh, the IPCC published this statement, 30% of plants and animals are at risk of extinction due to climate change. I would say that number is a lot higher now, um, being 2020 at the making of this video. So uh, we're, we're at an interesting time, uh, warmest January on record this year ever in the history of our record keeping. I would assume that's probably going to be the same for February as well, um, which puts us on scale for the warmest year on record. Uh, if I were to predict, and we'll see what, we'll see what happens with that. We humans can take our shirt off and be happy and comfortable as this climate changes. Um, if you're a bear, you cannot take your fur off. Uh, if you're a seal, you can't change the amount of blubber that you have to survive as the oceans warm or cool. So other animals out there, frogs in the cloud forest, they cannot adapt as quickly as we can with, with this stuff. So we are putting a lot of these species in a really dangerous place by changing the climate. Um, even just a little bit is quite significant for something that can't actually adapt as quickly as us humans can move to another part or put on clothes, take off clothes, we can do things like that. Um, so there's a big risk with climate change for the species out there. Um, I think I'll stop at this point and we'll continue the next class in this area. Okay. <laughs>